Hello, everybody. We are here at CXRX, moved to a different room today, so we are starting a little bit late, but we have Alan, our speaker here, and we have Emma yeah, here. Yeah, She's going to be ready for doing a live demo on her Hyundai Ionic 5 EV, and so we are getting Alan's slides up onto the screen in the room. And I will be right back. Okay. So I know that we have Seth online. Alan, welcome. Glad to have you here. Thank you. And this will be great to hear. We have your slides up here now, and they are going to the folks online as well. Okay. So we can use this as the microphone. Okay. So that way folks online will hear you. And I think that this camera will also, but right now we're sending out that image. It's not from the camera. All right. Okay, so if you want to come on up here and describe, yeah. I think that if we just leave this right here, it should be good. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Well, that's what he's going to be underway. But yeah. I think he's going to respond. I don't know about anything else. This is the new technology. I'm from the it, old is technology. it is working. And they have two TV channels, black and white, growing up in Madrid. And they went off at, at midnight. Okay, so the microphone is working. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is an organization that wants to make a difference in the world. And the world needs that difference. We are on the news. Uh, global warming is coming faster than anticipated. The exhaust from the vehicles is one of the major causes of the pollution of the atmosphere, the carbon, the, the global warming. So we're behind Europe. Europe just passed a law. 2035, there will be no gasoline vehicles on the road, period. The United States is a little behind. They haven't passed the law. But since I get to a tipping point, and the tipping point means hundreds of millions of people die. So the United States is pushing. So many, many organizations are working. And what my team and I decided to do is not invent any more other things that we usually did. Let's devote our creativity, our talents, our skills to electrical vehicles. That's what the, the world needs right problem. now, yeah. electrical vehicles. So, so far, we have developed seven concepts to help humanity. And it's too much to show, we won't have time. So we're gonna show one. Uh, Kevin, uh, I told him uh, we found a way to convert a, a gasoline vehicle into an electrical vehicle. <laughs> and he said, well, that's probably cost a million dollars to do that, you know. You gotta take the engine off, put the electrical motors in. And I said, no, actually the owner of the vehicle will get financial benefit by converting, you know? So if we have time, we'll, we'll get to the last slide that, that talks about that. Converting, and the idea is because we know they're manufacturing gasoline vehicles that 20 years from now, they're gonna be polluting the planet. So if there's any way that they can be electrical, uh, we found the best possible way, we think. So let's go to slide number one, please. Slide number two, actually. Okay, so the idea is that they're putting windmills on houses and buildings to generate electricity. Why couldn't we put windmills on a car to generate electricity when the car is parked? Our research shows that cars are parked 7,000 hours a year average. So you go home from work, shower, you have dinner, you watch a movie, you sleep, wake up, have breakfast, 12 hours that your car can be charging. So if there's any way to put a windmill, next slide. So this is the first concept that we come out with. So I said, well, we don't want to kill birds. So we put a net on, on the windmill. Uh, and then 
I finally was able to get an appointment at the University of Houston with a PhD on electrical wing engineering. And I went over there fully mentally prepared to hear this will never work, and I'll tell you why it will never work. But no, it was the opposite. The world needs this vehicle. But your design is really, really bad. That's what he told me. I said, well, my problem is that wind doesn't blow all the time. He said, well, in coastal areas, it blows 24-7. I said, well, Chicago is the windy city. It's not in the coast. So, yeah, it's not next to a lake as big as an ocean. But Chicago is number 14 on wind. Oklahoma is not even on the coast. It's number one. But if you think about Indonesia, the Philippines, Malaysia, all of those coastal areas, 40% of the human population live in coastal areas. They depend on the ocean for 75% of the protein. So the wind blows 24-7. Some countries, they call it the tropical breeze. And, but So that car alone in, in those areas will benefit people in Africa and need this. Uh, not everywhere you go with a car, you can find a place to float the car. Uh, with this, anywhere you are, you go camping, just raise them up and you charge your car. So he said, first of all, take the net out. And only three blades. There is a reason why the big windmills only have three blades. Um, it's the balance, it's many reasons. I said, yeah, but I don't want to kill birds. He said, well, the windmills kill the birds because when the bird approaches the windmill, the change of pressure makes the lungs explode, burst. And it's killing almost a million birds and a million bats, but it is an acceptable uh, number because we need this renewable energy. We got trillions of birds. I mean, we are killing uh, 14 billion chickens every year and 12 billion turkeys, you know? So he said, this is not going to kill birds. Don't worry about the net. And only three blades. Let's go to the next slide, please. So then as he told me, the blade should be very light. Uh, maybe it starts from with a coat of plastic. If they were made out of lead, it will take longer to rotate. So if somebody grabs the brake, you plug another two-dollar blade in. Uh, that's simple. Make it to where the bottom of the blade is nine feet high. That way somebody has to get on a step ladder to touch the windmill when you raise it. So. That, that, those conversations at the University of Houston changed a lot. And then we're looking at the logistics, okay, this, the races, then the telescopes up, so you have to have the mechanics for that to happen. And then I saw in the news an article about the switchblade drone. And it shows in slow motion the drone coming out of a tube, an army tube, and all of a sudden, two big wings in the front and two big wings in the back. I say, if an airplane can come out of a tube, uh, then a windmill can come out of a tube. It's all a spring loading. Let's go to the next slide, please. So, because the tube is so uh, space saving, allows two windmills to be put in. If you look at figure number one, top view, you see the two tubes up there. So I was talking hydraulics, make it go up. Professor said, don't talk hydraulics. It's a cheap motor, electrical motor that makes it go up. Uh, this is going to cost very little money, the way it's designed. So they go up, and then, like the antenna in your car, the telescope up, the telescope up, and when they come out of the tube, they open automatically, the, the windmills open automatically. The benefit of two windmills, obviously, is you charge the car twice as fast. According to the University of Houston, at nine miles an hour, one windmill will charge any car in six hours. Uh, at three miles an hour, one windmill will give you maybe $22 worth of gasoline free, equivalent to $22 worth if you park your car 14 hours at night time or 12 hours. And of course, if you go to war, you can also raise them up. So 
I say, oh, wow, this is shaping up to be you know, better than I thought it would be. You know? So does anybody have any question on the mechanics of how does this work? Everybody understands the mechanics, right? A, uh, a brake release or a clutch release that one of your skins is fast, they allow you to take off or it, it, it has the electronics, you know. It does have a tail that is hard to see, as you can see on the big image, a little tail that also springs that makes them face the wind, you know. Um, but basically, it's a very, very simple design. The cheap the electronics. It, uh, if the wind starts blowing too hard, they fall down. Uh, anemometer. It will raise the, the wind speed and make them fall down. The University of Houston told me you got to put tanks on the, on the car. I said, no, this is electrical. You will need a gasoline tank. I said, no, no, no. Once the car is charged, the windmills can compress air into a tank. And that air in the compressor in the tank can be converted into electricity. So the car will have a much longer range. Otherwise, it will be a waste. If the, if the batteries are charged in six hours, but you got seven hours to go, must as well do that. The big windmills do that. I said, well, I, I haven't seen any tanks next to the big windmills. He said, yeah, they're on the ground. Um, and that's what they do. They compress air. So in the peak hours, they can use the compressed air. So all of a sudden, this thing is getting better and better and better, you know? Um, cannot drive with the turbine zone. It's 100%, but you can plug it in if you want to. It's 100% electrical. Uh, we meal, but if you need to plug it in, you can plug it in. Um, the, on the patents, we claim that you can send it to, it to a home. Maybe in Africa, in India, in poor countries, they might have a need to do that because they don't have their off the grid. So it's just one, one of the little claims. Um, once everything is done charging, the chief makes the windmills fall down. So there's no need to spin if everything is complete. The design finally, after several engineers had looked at it, they said, I, we don't see any reason why this wouldn't work. I said, yeah, this, this is a need in Africa, in India. And at the University of Houston, they told me, wait a moment, people in New York City, they, they like free gasoline, okay? Uh, everybody likes free gasoline. And there is two motivations for this car. One is that you're gonna get free transportation and the other one is going to be that you're helping the planet. Because this actually is the only vehicle in the world that does not pollute the planet. I said, well, electrical vehicles don't pollute the planet. He said, no, no. When you plug an electrical vehicle, you're polluting the planet because that electricity comes from fossil fuels, nuclear plants. So, somehow you're polluting the planet. This is 100% non-polluting. This is the only vehicle in the world that does not pollute the planet. In fact, this is the only vehicle in the world that will give you free energy for transportation. That's because when you plug the car in to charge, it costs you money. It costs you 20% of what gasoline costs, they still cost you money. Also, this is the only vehicle in the world that you can charge anywhere you want. Uh, anywhere you go, raise the map. And so even if you only get $10 worth of equivalent worth of gasoline because you, you park an all night, that, that's good. $10 multiplied by 365 days, that amounts to some money. At the manufacturer level, this should cost only a few hundred dollars to install at the manufacturer level. Do you have a question? Yeah, um, so I was looking at the uh, energy density on the aircraft compression uh, energy storage, and uh, so when you do use atmospheric air, it's uh, 0.1 megajoules per liter, uh, and batteries store at 0.4 megajoules per, mm -hmm. per liter, so they're four times as energy dense. Why wouldn't you just add more batteries? More batteries? Instead of uh, air compression. 
Well, the manufacturer is going to do whatever they want. Uh, but we just claim those options uh, in case they want to use them, you know? So, but that, that's great because uh, the thinking is probably going to be why complicate things with air compression tanks. Let's just put more batteries and charge more. You know? So, so far, go ahead. Any questions? Okay, so so basically, a uh, one thing the University of Houston told us is this equals in Texas alone to trillions of gasoline, gallons of gasoline that would not be used in Texas alone. I said, oh wow. This is a bigger animal than we thought, you know. Do you have more slides to go through? Or is this your last slide? Well, uh, let's finish with this chart and then I'll show a couple more slides. Okay. Okay. So the design is complete. The engineer said it, it would work. It would, the, the world needs this car. So I drive to Tesla. I go to Austin and I knock on the door. This little girl. Say, how you doing? I said, doing great. She said, I, I said, I'm trying to help the world with this uh, vehicle that I have, you know. Um, who can I talk to? Oh, let me bring you into a team member. So we walked to a long, long office. There were draftsmen everywhere. And talked to him. And the guy said, who is this guy? He said, he just knocked on the door. He had an invention. Is he barging? He said, no. She knocked, she knocked on the door, you know. Oh, well, he's not supposed to be here. Uh, I said, look, I'm trying to help the world with my car, and this is special for Tesla. Tesla will be number one forever for 20 years doing this car. He said, okay, let's, let's and he's looking at, at the graphics that I'm showing him. He said, let's go out outside. You know? So we walk in like a football field to go out, out the door again, and I'm talking to him. I said, look, you know, um, I researched Tesla very hard to get an invention into Tesla because they get hit. 5,000 times a day with the most stupid ideas. I've been reviewing the ideas they get hit with, car washes and things that Tesla have nothing to do with. So it's going to be the Tesla shuffle, shuffle the thing. So I need help. He said, well, um, the problem is, is that we can lose our job if we let you in the office because there could be a lawsuit that what happened inside the office, you know, a uh, frivolous lawsuit. Once you are inside the office, the judge cannot throw the lawsuit out because he needs to know what happened inside the office. If you never come into the office, so we have a very strict policy of not accepting invention from outsiders. But I tell you how it's done. You put it on Twitter. You put it on the Twitter, on the Tesla Twitter account, and it will be seen. I say, well, my problem is that I recess that and. So many people are loading the Twitter account with so many stupid ideas that it's just amazing. They come from Japan, Germany, Australia, Peru, uh, Canada, everywhere. You know, every inventor is hitting Tesla right now. So, and I show him my cell phone idea. I said, "Look, I'm trying to help Tesla, so I invented a cell phone, so you guys can be number one on the cell phone." Also, uh, so I'm I'm all Tesla, you know. But if I cannot get in, I'll go to Toyota. I go to other. Everybody's doing electrical vehicles. You know? So the one reason we're here today is anybody have any idea how to, and, and at this time, we're like, if Lucy wants to do it, Toyota, General Motors wants to do it, anybody wants to do it, we're open for that. We want this car to happen, whether it's Tesla or anybody else. So we are gonna offer a million dollar funding fee to anybody that can get us into electrical vehicle companies that results into a license. And the way we're gonna do that is 10% of all the royalties that we get goes to that person that created that connection up to the amount of a million dollars. So it's, it's a million dollar funding thing. Uh, we gotta get aggressive to help the planet. Um, so remember, we're looking for the support. We send the graphic to Charge Magazine. We haven't heard nothing. So everywhere we knock on the door is like, 
Now we're hiring a social media company to start posting on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, everywhere. I'm hoping that millions of people will see this image pretty soon. And hopefully, uh, uh, it can be a car manufacturer in India that, that might see it and say, wow, let's make this car. You know, it, it don't have to be in America. And then they can export it everywhere. So uh, that's one of the reasons we're here. Let's go to the next slide. And we're done with this vehicle. Uh, the presentation of it. So Kevin was telling me, how the hell are you going to convert a gasoline vehicle into an electrical vehicle? I said, well, it's not really it's converting without converting. Let's imagine that you're going from Houston to Oklahoma. So you're going to drive your gas vehicle, gasoline vehicle, you're going to pollute the planet. Okay. Well, you can board a, a train, you go to a train station, put your car on the train, and it, it will drive you to Oklahoma. Oklahoma, you get off the train, and you, you only pay $20 fee to get on the train. It's going to be a lot cheaper than gasoline. You have less wear and tear. You are not so tired because you've not been driving. You've been actually working on your computer. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. The next, next slide. So that, that concept has been proven in, in Europe. If you want to go from England to France, get on a 100% electrical vehicle. They depart seven times an hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's a proven technology. Once all the vehicles are electrical, that system can still be used. And of course, it uses existing infrastructure. They don't, they don't have to lay new rail, railways. So let's wear and tear, let's, let's be tired, let's gasoline, let's cost, let's pollution to the planet. And it, it's, it's an off the wall idea, but you just never know. So we just thought of it, so we claim it as one of the seven concepts that, that we have. Anybody have any questions on this one? That it works in Europe? to work in America. I'm going from Los Angeles, San Francisco. I'd love to get in a train like that and, and have my lunch and work on my laptop and go in and tear my car and not pollute the planet. Uh, it's doable. Uh, everything that we uh, work on, we do a lot of surveys to find out if people can find something wrong with it. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So basically, uh, in here, it shows that the channel train goes at 90 miles an hour. So you're going to get there faster anyway. Um, uh, it's 24 hours a day. Uh, so it is 100% electrical. It, they do it over there. It can, it can be done over here. As the world goes forward, we find finding more ways to generate renewable energy with wind power. Uh, we are way behind Europe, but we determined to catch up. So all that electricity that can be created on renewable energy can be put to work in situations like this one here. And that is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh. All right. So I think we can follow up with questions for Alan when we're out in the, the lobby area. Okay. So. We won't be able to transmit any more of the, the photos here, but that's okay. We'll see if we can do something with the phone's camera when we're out there at Emma's car, okay? So if everybody would like to pull everything together here, we can head on out back around the way that we came. All right. And folks will still be able to ask Alan questions while we're out here because I'm sure everybody's thinking about it right now. If they're not talking to him already. Right. Obviously if if we hadn't gotten the late start, we might have been able to do more in the room, but we need to get going there's an end time for when Emma's okay. gotta get her car going <laughs> out of here. And it was great to see it already.
Zoom on my phone instead of by phone call. But all right, I just dig into the box. All right, it's open already. Okay. What do we this is the hitch. So, yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. That's a big healthy fan. I was hoping yeah. to be sort of uh, turbo booster uh, gas system or something. Oh, wait, no. You don't do those on these, do we? <laughs> okay, did Alan make it around over here or is he? He was still talking, talking to folks. Okay, that's fine. He can talk to him wherever is convenient. Wherever is convenient. You know, Bob, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right, Bill's got the light. Very good. Well, we have to So you're heading out of it. <laughs> Jason's got an idea. Very good. Love it. Strange. I'm catching the audio, yeah. Imagine you charged up your power walls in case there is a rainstorm tonight here. You're going to have an outage. Not a storm box. Oh, okay. So Alan's car died in the way over here, so we're going to get out and try oh. to get him uh, going and get before it gets too dark. Oh, okay. Away. All righty. So thank so much. Yeah, thank you. It was wonderful. And, uh, Come in, yeah. We'll reach out to Kevin again. All right, so perfect. Anybody has any follow-up questions? Don't have to email, whatever. All righty, yeah. sounds good. All right, guys, thanks so much, Alan. Right. Very informative. Uh, my ability to present this is the history of the organization that has a square of the children during the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> the name is Green. Ah, uh, how cute, how cute. <laughs> Twinkie, oh. She's going to leave her alone because she gets depressed. Uh, <laughs> perfect, thanks so much, Alan. <laughs> Battery is at eighty percent. Okay. My normal amount. Okay. Well, then you should be good for the power outage. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Oh, that's a nifty yeah. angle, flexible angle. A cheater. A cheater. Huh. It's a smart tool to use in a case like this where you got to get around the corner. All right, that demo, what else can be done concurrently? Oh, we can't. Okay.
Hey, making progress here. Ah. <laughs> 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 Material is supposed to pop out. Yeah. <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, a matter of adding more complexity to have a compressor and things versus just having yeah. another battery. I've kind of wondered, I mean, we hear about these uh, scooters in China that have, you know, interchangeable batteries. Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder, it'd be nifty on a car. You could have your main battery mm -hmm. permanently built in. I mean, they're all talking about structural yeah. battery packs. But if you had an extra battery that you could go in and out with just to add sure. a bit more, you know, up, up to whatever you figure the, the largest size is that a person well, can handle. Um, batteries that are about like this big mm -hmm. that you can get for camping are like one or two kilowatts. So that's okay. about eight miles of range. Something that, yeah, you could just slip it in and get a car yeah. moving to where you need it to. Yeah. Just that they Thank you. 
another one like a three hundred dollar system that that's what somebody would put in for another three hundred dollars. And then you know, hundred dollars for something that just plugs right into the phone and I yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's what you use it in other occasions too. I'll call yeah. it back to the <laughs> yeah, it's just a little uh do they can hear it's wireless so I don't have to run any wires from the trailer to the car. Huh? And you got um, this thing and it, it works even while it's driving. You know, if we're going down the road, it's like a blind spot uh, and you can oh. me on the trailer. Good, yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Right. I used to screw it on and you need to run wires to it either on the outside or on the inside so you get twelve volts to it. I think they'd make battery power too. Right? I had twelve volt convenient where uh, Plug it in, so. Okay. I have them that'll go into the same boat for the license plate. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, chill okay. Don't worry about oh. that. I don't know if it'll be. They're not going to be back in the trailer with the chill gate down, but I don't want to bust it off. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. Making some progress getting. Things visible here. I see some tape on some wires. That stuff I've never done. I, I, I know just about it. Ah! <laughs> that was, uh, oh, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. What? Now I'm sure. We have a shift phase shortly. Now it's a tricky part. Oh, like that. All right, now it sounds like the shift change. <laughs> I don't think we need to do this on both sides at the same time, but they said that, so now taking the bumper off is a bit challenging. But they said start from the bottom. Pull up or out? I ran over a spare tire. No, I ran over a... Oh, let me pull that out. Rip my bumper off the back of the car. So oh. try that. Wow. That was that's one way to get them up a couple. Are they part of this? Are they part of that? Okay. There, there'll be wiring attaching the bumper cover, probably. Yeah. Oh. Making progress. Okay. Whoa. Once we've got. One side off. So wait, wait, wait. Kind of peel it. <laughs> peel it one side to the other. Parking lot. All right. Yeah. I love it. 
question is, where are the Every month, right. December, we do something a little special with the social, but uh, yeah, so we'll be here the 11th of August, and second Thursday in September, and October, yeah, November. Yep. Okay. Yep. What time? Starting at 6.30. Okay. Yep. I could get off at of that time. Yeah, yeah. It, it's always great to get questions from different people, different points of view. And, uh, yeah, this is great to see what, what we can do here with TV. Year, it's brand new. She's had it for two months. I was wondering. There's not a lot of yeah. instruction taken off the software. <laughs> Although she's seen some video and it recommended certain approaches for doing it. Because uh, other people have done this already. Yeah. All right. Great seeing you, Tim. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Good to see you. So are you Joe or uh, Cameron? Cameron. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cameron. Oh, all right. Very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, Why? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's so helpful. I'll always count on Charlie for good comments. <laughs> Hi, come on in, watch. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really like the scene. Pocket knife. Anybody got a small screwdriver on a pocket knife? Small screwdriver on a pocket knife. One of those small. You ruin this one. I don't care. It's a dollar. <laughs> well, that's, found something. <laughs> See if it's workable. Everybody that said it's sitting over there alone. Charge planner at all. So I helped out with that. The guy that started the project was doing it. So let's just push it up. Put it off. Put it off. Quite a bit of wiring inside that bumper car. Yeah. We need Jack. Thank <laughs> you. 
now removed so Got everything out of the room there while we're here? Yeah. Joe's laptop is I'm with you with that. Can ask. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. Food or something that we're going to need to clean up in there? Oh, it came out here already. Okay. Okay. Hold it down a little bit further and see if we can see it. Oh, that came on. Oh, it snaps off. It snaps off. All right, let's back it up. Back to it. All right. Okay. Yeah, just drive around like that. All right. And then they said this one is the middle. These, I think, can stay. Okay. Good. Um, Here are the. Who got them? Who got them? Nope, they're here. Oh, yep. So is that the next step? Is the whole? Yep. Yeah. There's a place. That's done. Yeah. People can get on that side. All right. Uh, Washers in the right way, but 
never researched it. Cool. So what do auto mechanics get paid? <laughs> <laughs> they get paid in pizza. Uh. Yeah, one, yeah, yeah. One one bite for every uh fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be a slow eater. I've got three on so it's nice if Hyundai to leave some holes in there that bolts can go through. Uh, I'm sure it's quite complex. Yeah. Right. Put the long ones where you need long ones, the short ones where the short ones will do the job. Have you done it? Yeah, 
unavailable. But the food's great because they let you use the space for free. And you don't okay. charge anything, so yeah. it works out really well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah, if they need the computer room once in a while on the time that we request it, so it's so, yeah. 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 You can't complain a lot for free. Right. Right. Who are you going to complain to? Nobody's going to listen. <laughs> I'll complain that someone keeps scheduling these lunches when I've already got stuff planned. It's like the third one that I've had to bow out of. Yeah. No, I'm... Generally, it's going to be the Friday after the second yeah. Thursday, so... That's good. It's yeah, kind of my fault, then, huh? Pretty... <laughs> <laughs> you, you can build it into your future plan, uh, which you can do. It'll be fine. It works. Yeah, this one tomorrow. I've got a bunch of friends that all have the day off. Oh, perfect. We're going to meet up for this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we were going to try, I have a friend in Dallas, and we were going to try and meet halfway yeah. uh, between Dallas and here, and he got a work trip to Alamogordo. So, I've been trying to convince him to get an EV6, because it would save him a lot of gas. Uh, yeah. But he could still charge, uh, because he works for the EPA, so he could still charge the same cents per mile, Ah. Like, I mean, he, he is required to charge the same cents per mile, but he yeah. 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 So, telling him, I mean, he, he actually was super excited about it. He just hasn't gone around to actually work. <clears throat> Are there any to get? Yeah. Um, there's a website that you can go. Um, it's like EV6 backwards, and it'll like use the Takia. Inventory search system to find all of them that are available. Oh, yeah. Inside it. <laughs> look at where the inventory is. Good. What are you going to tell them? Major Clay, cut one. Now we talk about In this case, yeah. Let's we have a social event in December, a place of a regular meeting. <laughs> we meet at a cafeteria because many <laughs> people can buy food in a social event. Yeah. Normally, you stay here, or is it all yes. different places? No, here. Right. Yeah. Are you first time too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Every second Thursday of the month, okay. six thirty to eight thirty here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> three, three places. There's, there, oh, you want to you want to go back to nineteen ninety three? Yes, I can tell you some other places we met <laughs> back then, but I'm I'm oh, referring bad. to the current. Time to long. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I have to ask Bill when he gets back. <laughs> uh, back in 1994, I had a Jet Industries electric car. So what Jet Industries did, and of course they went out of business, is they took a glider from Chrysler of the Dodge Omni, and glider meaning no engine, but with the transmission. So it had, had a manual transmission. They put in a motor and a bunch of lead-acid batteries, some in the front over the motor, some in the back, and you drove it always in second gear because that matched the RPMs of what the motor put out versus with what you wanted to drive. So your entire driving range from zero up to your top speed. Second gear. In second gear, yeah. How big a torque curve did you have? For, I mean, I mean were you just running RPMs? Was it, yeah, I mean... Was screaming 10,000 RPMs driving? No, that no, no. Never got really extreme. And, and you have lots of torque from zero, so you didn't need first gear. Second gear was the right ratio for all your driving. Didn't even need a shifter. No, but it was all there because that was stock in the car. They wow. just got the gliders with no engine. Uh, 
the jet industry built, I don't know, 100 of them or something. As I said, they went out of business because they couldn't sell them for a profit. <laughs> Dodge Omni, hatchback. You know, some guys from uh, Chevy did the opposite. They took 25 Fiskers and put LS8 motors in them and sold them for a quarter million dollars like that. Yeah, I, I've heard of people going the other direction too. But uh, yeah, the, the range when I got it used was only about 25, 30 miles. So that's why, like I said, they couldn't yeah. sell them at a profit because there are too many people that will buy <laughs> back then. Or now, <laughs> electric cars with that range. I heard anything about the uh, carbon batteries, carbon-based batteries we're talking about, the second generation? I or? hear little tidbits about you know, all kinds of solid-state batteries and different things, different chemistry, sodium right. batteries. Um, One I've heard about was uh, graphene mine oxide, yeah. a new combination of graphite and oxygen. Mm, okay. I mean, if you believe that Elon Musk does his homework, he gets asked all the time, and his statements are always, we use the best of what's <laughs> available out there. I mean, not that there aren't theoretically better chemistries, but you need to have material supply, which already lithium around the world is, you know, soaked up as quickly as it can be produced. And uh, so, I mean, you need something that's practical, not just in a lab that you can build one, <laughs> you know. Yeah. To make a difference so there's some um, exciting tech that is like a food being mass manufactured but I won't really say well, I don't expect to see any of that until they can actually build you know five hundred thousand I just still think you're just gonna be the best of whatever we got which is the variants. Right. Yeah. I mean I've read that uh Canasonic's gonna build a battery factory in Kansas. Yeah the demand and that's you know, the chemistry that car makers want you know, at the price they want it. It's got to be at a price that you can build and sell the cars mm -hmm. with those batteries at, too. So you're planning from uh, bought into uh, quantum state, which is the probably pretty close to mass manufacturing uh, solid state battery. Okay. Um, we've got a big investment for the W's. Uh, uh -huh. So I bought in and I'm considered buying one to low right now. Okay. Yeah, I've heard this. I had a couple of years ago when they uh, were making the play. They didn't have too much progress. All right, maybe twice. I can't think that happens slow. A lot of times something doesn't happen until it does. Yeah. Like they said, you know, house prices in California won't go down until they did. You know? <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with the battery chemistry. It's just, you know, another one's not going to replace lithium until it does. But if they put on canyon solid state, that's going to be the next generation of batteries. Yeah. Which is graphite batteries are a version of a solid state battery. Oh, they are. Okay. They're already using really graphite batteries. In the lithium batteries. In the lithium batteries. Right, yeah. 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 It's a major component of them. But it's still full of lithium, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't I remember it. either. The final bed. The final bed. Yeah, this is Yeah, this is Yeah, this is the small one. This is the small one. This is the small one. Yeah, I'll go with my wife on a trip on Saturday. Oh. So, yeah, anybody who wants to come for lunch is available <laughs> tomorrow. We're going to meet at Mediterranean down in the Clear Lake area. So, uh, yeah, it'd be great to see you there. Where are you going? Mediterranean is right on that. No, no, I mean on the trip. Oh, Arizona? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have to decide tomorrow. Uh, I'll be driving my evening. Well, hopefully you got the time and yeah. make it down there. That would be great. So. Mm -hmm.
all be together and have lunch and mm-hmm. catch up. Uh, did Paul Cohen get invited? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think so. Is he going? I don't know because he's, I mean, you know where he lives. Mm-hmm. You know, past Ikea, too. So. Well, he's done. He will raise his hand. Oh, yeah. Uh, Actually, my wife and I just had lunch with Colin and his wife on Monday. Yeah, so it was nice. Mm-hmm. At his house? No, at a little Madeline. Oh, yeah. yeah.
I'd like to build build this. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, I like that. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, Okay, yeah, that would work too. Bill was asking, what did you call that saw? This is the oscillating? Oscillating saw, Bill. Great for cutting yeah. flat underneath the bottom, like the bottom of the fence or the... Oh, when you want to... Underneath the trim of the door or something when you're moving it, the mm. bottom of the trim. <laughs> and we basically ended up cutting the whole thing. Oh. It was a big. Uh huh. It was the only thing that would do it. Yeah. <laughs> You have to put it like a a stick, something long, goes across here, and you place the head on it, so you're not holding the head the whole time. You're just doing the measurement right here. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're painting on something, you have, you put it across to where your hand can rest on it, to where you're not holding the saw up all by itself. Yeah, it's not well, you know, you're, you're yeah. a little bad. Oh, so is there any pieces? I see what you got. Oh, I see this. It's underneath the car. Take a time off of it. Yeah. <laughs>
We can touch it. It's not going to cut it. Thank you. 
All right. The only one that ever sees it. <laughs> oh, every time we we go, every time I see it, we go point it out. Hey, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Burring tools. Any tools you don't have? Oh, 
Yeah, you cut right into the sticker. Oh, it's for oh. <laughs> John. I had a. My wife said Taekwondo and uh, so did the son. But after the test, the guy would go, Press that. Okay. <laughs> That's how I remember. So we're going to. Yep. You don't want to stand on the receiver hitch first just to uh, make sure that they torqued it down right. <laughs> Really tight. I that was though, right? Yeah. What yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jason. See you in a month. Yep. All right. As Torque Ranch will travel. <laughs> I'm going to I'm just, I'm not useful to get me against this. All right. right. Glad you had fun. <laughs> All right. She's got it all in hand, yeah. <laughs> Again, this is all the I was Yeah, just do a minimal amount. Try it. Cutting this cheese. <laughs> oh, they're going to like that. <laughs> Does this actually pop down below the hitch? The hitch is going to be here. I might be able to put a stabilizer in here later. Those two screws just put a piece of wood or uh, metal across there. I'm not sure there's any space, but yeah. Even if you haven't put a bit piece. Twelve hour project. You can't even
to what's ready for the long man. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Never kept track. Yeah. Last time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Trailer dog. All right. All right, looks good. So, in place. There we go, sir. Pleasant to actually get.